Okay, thank you so much, Joe. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. Thanks for having me. Thanks to Yelp for hosting us tonight. Um, yeah, I'm from a company called Ultra Leap. This is a, a new name that we uh, rebranded the, the company under. It's about six months ago now. Uh, we merged two companies together last year. One was Leap Motion, uh, and the other was uh, Ultra Haptics. And then we joined them together and created uh, the company Ultra Leap. How many of you, had, by the way, heard of Leap Motion? in the past, as many. And uh, how many of you actually have used the Leap Motion controller to do any design or, or coding work? Um, yeah, Leap Motion is, I mean, it's been the leader in sort of hand and gesture recognition for the better part of 10 years now. Uh, and then Ultra Haptics, on the other side, it is a, is a mid-air haptics company. It's a, it's a technology that enables you literally to, to feel um, objects, devices, buttons in mid-air with your bare hands, and I'll talk about it more today. Uh, but we, we merged these two companies together, mainly because we, we need to, first of all, know where the hand is, hence the, you know, the, the hand tracking from Leap Motion, before we can figure out where to deliver the, the haptics to. You know, our, our tagline used to be, uh, in Ultra Haptics, used to be feeling without touching, uh, which has felt it was a little bit creepy. So we, <laughs> <laughs> we rebranded it as sort of digital worlds that feel human. And this is really about how do we make a more sort of natural interaction with the digital world uh, in the future. Um, it, it really is uh, a, a, a magical technology uh, in many ways. I, I, I don't know, if, have, have any of you actually experienced uh, an ultra haptics device in, in midair and actually felt the, the experience? Um, I, I should have brought one of the development kits along today, but it, it, it's, it's, a, it's an array of little ultrasonic speakers uh, that you, 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 you put in an array and, and then they, they all fire at slightly different times. Um, and then they focus onto your hand and, and, move and follow your hand in real time. And literally, you can feel the objects, devices, experiences on your bare hand. Um, for people who try it the first time, it's, it's magical. Um, and it's, it's a really fun experience. You can see that, that here. Just watch this uh, girl who's experiencing the effect um, as she interacts with a, with a digital poster. This down here is the, is the uh, j just off the screen, it'll come back in a moment, but it, it, that is the, the, the device, the development kit that we've had around for a few years. It's, it's an array of about 200 little ultrasonic speakers, and essentially in this whole zone of about five or six cubic feet in front of the screen there, you can feel these effects. So this was a, an early digital poster we did with Disney, uh, with the, the Star Wars, The Last Jedi, and essentially what, what uh, the, 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 the gentleman there and the girl are feeling is a sort of simulated force effect as they put their hand out. Of course, none of them know what, it, what that should actually feel like, but they feel something, and it, it's a really sort of magical experience. And then what we find is when people try and experience these interactive posters is they, you know, they call their friends around and everybody wants to have a go, and it becomes a really uh, sort of uh, social and inclusive experience. Which, uh, which is, is, is hugely uh, uh, you know, transformative, and, and, and especially for, for brands and marketers who, who want to have advertisements out there and, and want to um, make them uh, be, be experienced, be remembered, be, be felt. Um, so, uh, so that's <coughs> you know, the, the, the technology. Um, and it's, it's really this, this combination of, of a number of uh, aspects. It's the, it's the content, uh, having extraordinary content, in that case from Disney, but it you know, can apply in all sorts of... Uh, uh, use cases, um, shared experiences make a huge difference as well. Uh, there, you, know, you saw the girl there um, interacting with her dad and, and playing around with the with the poster, um, and then presence. Presence is is a term that, particularly in VR and AR, um, give, it means that sense of, of presence, that sense of being and interacting in an experience, and that it and being real. And you add all these these things together, and it really can become a, a magical experience. This is just one other example uh, on the sort of gaming and fun side before I get into more sort of serious applications. This, this was uh, um, uh, uh, work we did with IGT, which is the largest casino uh, gaming uh, cabinet m maker in the world. And these true 4D units uh, include our technology, they have for a few years now. Um, they're very premium end uh, slot machines um, and they're very immersive experiences. Um, there's a few hundred of them around Vegas if in, in most of the hotels there these days. But what it is, it's a combination of multiple technologies, input and output. Um, there's, a, there's a 3D screen there. It's a glasses free 3D screen. So when you sit down in the right position, you see all this 3D content 
uh, projected in front of you that you can interact with. There are cameras to the side of the unit that uh, sense where your hands are and follow your gestures. Um, and then in, it's, it's hidden by the chair here, but there are two of our arrays built into it as well, one, from, one above and one below. So the whole space is filled with this sense of touch and haptics as well. Uh, and so it, it, I mean, the whole purpose of this is to create an immersive, engaging experience. And of course, in this case, for people to keep spending money and playing the game. Um, but it, it, but everything, every sort of interaction in these experiences, whether it's the Sphinx game or the other ones there, um, it, as they interact with the content, they can, they, they can feel it, interact with it, uh, move things around, and, and, and really have a really tactile experience. And you know, the, the best bit at the end when you, uh, when you win the jackpot, or if you win a large amount of money, you see all these sort of virtual 3D coins coming down in, in, air, in, in, in 3D. You can put your hands out and you can actually feel them land in your hands. But t turning to sort of more, uh, slightly more serious applications or more computing and, and productivity and enterprise applications, I think the, the trend we're seeing is, is shown here. You know, from you know, 40, 50 years ago, the keyboard and the mouse were invented, um, to you know, 15, to, say 20 years ago, the touch screen started to take off. And now what you're seeing is uh, a lot of new applications moving into three-dimensional uh, applications. Uh, some people call it spatial computing, the sense of being able to interact in, in a 3D in, in environment. Um, it can also be called mixed reality, uh, which includes sort of uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, and, and so on. Um, but really, this, it, it's, it's really, I think, going to transform the, the way we interact with machines over the next, uh, well, the next sort of 10 years plus, uh, uh, it's going to be a whole new sort of computing and, and uh, paradigm, and I think really going to affect how we design and, and, and think of, of, of uh, interactions. And this is another way, really, of showing the same thing. And the, the point about this is, it, we're, we're, I think we're, we're heading to a future where interactions is going to become supremely natural again with your, with your, with your hands. And you look back you know, thousands of years, people have been creating things with their hands, sculpting them, uh, interacting with the world with their hands. And then you know, in the last uh, 100, 200 years, we've, we've, if we've invented all these sort of proxy devices that have helped us you know, in, interact with machines or, or more lately computers. But essentially, they're, they're, they are proxy devices. You have to use that device in order to, to affect an input uh, or receive an output. Um, and I think you're, we're starting to get to a point now where uh, you look ahead a few years, we'll, we'll be interacting again with our natural hands in, in, in 3D in a, in a really sort of in, intuitive way. Um, these are just some of the applications and use cases that we're working on uh, and uh, have uh, projects on. Um, you know, I talked about uh, the gaming a little bit. Um, that you know, includes also VR and AR applications and immersive uh, applications. Uh, we do a lot of work in, in automotive, and I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, the automo in a car, there's a very controlled environment, and, and there's a need to, uh, to interact in, in actually uh, simpler, more intuitive ways, really, to, to reduce distracted driving. Um, we do a lot of work in workspace uh, applications, so this is creative and immersive design, and I'll talk a bit more about that later. Um, I mentioned the marketing and advertising down here with that, that, uh, that poster that became interactive when you could reach out and actually interact and touch the content. Uh, we also do work in, in industrial, medical, public interfaces and, and smart home as well. Um, I'll touch on a few of these just to give you a sense of the, the sort of scope of uh, applications we're working on and, and, where, and, and how the sort of design uh, aspects fit in. Um, this... Uh, uh, was, was a much more advanced out-of-home advertising uh, poster compared with that, that Disney one you saw a, a few slides ago. This we, we timed with the, you know, the release of Ready Player One a couple of years ago, uh, which of course is a perfect application for us. It's, you know, it's a VR-based movie with haptic gloves, uh, and so it was, it was a perfect uh, uh, ex uh, uh, content in which to actually build an interactive poster. And I'll play you the video in a moment, but what is happening is, is you, you get to, it, it becomes a, a gamified experience in this case. And this is where you can really make design choices. You know, we, we, you, if, if you want to build a, an experience that uh, takes 
you know, 30 seconds and, and is really engaging and gamified, you can do that and you can make that immersive experience. Or if you want to do the, the, the opposite and, and build a very simple experience like that Star Wars Disney one, um, you would just, uh, it, it was just a single sensation. You'd feel the force and, and that was it. So you can really tailor and design these, these experiences depending on what it is you're trying to achieve. You want to create uh, a sort of a competitive gamified experience with a lot of people crowding around or do you want it to be short and, and, and move on to the next person? So I'll just play the, you this. This video um, it just shows you here from Marco here at the actual DSC post trade here show and the, and and the, the Intel booth. content. Uh, I'm here with one of our partners, Ultra Haptics, which is mid-air haptic experiences. And what we're doing is, is working with movie theaters around the world to create memorable experiences. And with the virtual base touch movie posters, a lot of dwell time and excitement uh, and really looking forward to implementing this worldwide. So you can see the Ultra Haptics device down at the bottom there, and essentially he's, uh, the, the user here is controlling the, um, the player in, in the Ready Player One maze here. And in, every footstep that the player is taking on the screen, he's actually feeling on his hand. And then as he in intercepts you know, different characters, or indeed the, the egg at the end, um, it was, uh, you, you have a different haptic effect, uh, essentially tied in with the experience. Um, that's your, an example of an experience in that case that took him you know, 72 seconds to, to run and, uh, uh, and then there will be a scoreboard after that and you know, other players can, can uh, compete. Um, but it, it's, um, it, it's, it's a really interesting uh, use case and, and you're going to start to see sort of rollouts of these kinds of posters in, in movie theatres and indeed in, in retail experiences over the next year or so. Um, and it's what we've built on the sort of the design side is a bunch of tools that can help enable that. Uh, we have a bunch of templates for different types of uh, experience uh, and, and then a, 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 sweet, a very suites of software, sensation designer we call it, and sensation editor that enable you to add these uh, effects uh, onto content that's in, in 2D or 3D uh, that, that, that already exists. <coughs> So let me turn to, to automotive to give you a, a taste of what's, what's going on there. Um, essentially, in a car, what you can do is uh, build in or integrate these, little, these haptic units in different locations within the car um, and essentially fill the whole space with haptic effects um, and turn the, as it says here, turn the vehicle actually into a programmable um, interface that uh, has tactile effects throughout the whole space. You can sort of merge the, the, um, the interaction zones from all the units and, and fill the whole area. So we do, we do a lot of work with automotive companies, and it's uh, particularly driven initially from the driver's side to, to reduce distraction, but I'll talk about some other interesting use cases as well. And I think the point here, and this, this applies to, to, to a lot of the work we do, is that, that it's multimodal. I'm sure Christine's going to talk about this uh, uh, as well. It's, it's, there's a com it's, a, it's the combination of, of these senses, the input and the output, that really makes the difference. Um, and so, you know, in the case of a car, what, what you're finding in the, in the newest cars that are in development, there are already cameras going into them to monitor the driver, uh, to, to um, uh, perform facial rec recognition or to track whether the driver is distracted and, and, and not paying attention. Um, and then they're integrating that with various uh, haptic effects you know, with, with our technology or with, with more traditional haptics um, to sort of wake up the driver if, if they're getting distracted or to alert them of something that's in a blind spot or in, indeed just to make the controls simpler. Um, and so all these play together. And if you can, if you sort of combine the, the tracking of the hands, of the head, of the ears with, with the output technologies that could involve touch in midair, combined with also touching the screen, um, you can make this uh, a much more natural natural uh, uh, experience. And these are just some of the, the use cases that we're working on uh, with the various sort of car companies. Uh, and I, I say that the predominantly, most of the work is, is, based on, uh, is based on these 3D center stack controls. So it's essentially filling the space around the driver with the haptics and they reach out, they perform a simple gesture like a pinch and then it can control various aspects of the, of the driver system. Not the safety critical components, but things that, like the navigation system or the media playback um, or the, the air conditioning. Um, and uh, it, it's, when, when you, uh, it, it, the problem with the cars right now is you, you, you have these huge touch screens that are, that are being rolled out. They're getting larger and larger and they're all becoming context, contextual so the, the context changes depending on what it is you're trying to do and so you have to hunt around to find what it is you're trying to press. And, and there's a real problem with distraction here. 
uh, where um, people, are, you know, drivers are looking and, 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 and you're not being able to find what they're trying to do. And so if you can add a, a, a simple gesture uh, in midair um, that sort of almost anticipates what you're trying to do, provide that feedback in, in the midair, that, that's, that's critical so that you know what you're doing without having to look and then you can keep your, your eyes on the road. I'll show you the data on that in a moment. It's really quite amazing what, what a difference it can make. I would say that's most of what we do, but there's you know, some in interest in, in haptic alerts as well um, that I mentioned. And then I, I want to show you a video in just a moment of some of the, 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 the new use cases that are really um, actually getting in inspired around here in the Bay Area from all the autonomous vehicle companies. Um, but they're thinking ahead to, you know, when, a, when an autonomous vehicle uh, in the future is driving you from A to B, you know, what are you going to be doing in the car? Um, you're not driving anymore, you're going to be sitting back, you're either going to be relaxing or you're going to be doing productive work or you're going to be consuming content. And so we have a little video in a moment that we, we, we of a demo that we had at CES that really tried to show all these experiences working together um, and uh, showing how, how in the future if you're wearing, for example, an AR headset, you'll be able to experience all this content and interact with it in a very uh, natural way as you're being driven on a journey. This is a video of the demo we actually had people sitting in at CES in this uh, concept car here. The back seat was filled with haptic effects. Uh, at the moment you'll see a shot of that. But there are haptic units here that fill that whole space in front of the passenger with haptics. Um, there's hand tracking as well. And so as they're in the experience, you can see they're pulling up these wearable interfaces that they can pull out different content and interact with it. In this case, actually, perform some shopping, check out, all while they're being driven. You can see how natural the interface becomes. It's just added to your hand in, 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 as an augmented interface. This section at the end is what we call the mindfulness part. It's, you know, if you're just sitting back, you, you, can, you interact with those particles, you feel the haptic effects as you do it. And actually, it's actually very um, soothing and uh, it becomes almost uh, meditative as you, as you sit there. So you, it, this was really more of a, a thought starter. It really got huge reaction, the positive reactions at, at CES last month, because it was really trying to show the, the future of what, what are people going to be doing in, in these uh, cars and, and how are they going to be, uh, what kind of experiences are they going to be consuming in them. Um, I won't go into this in detail, but this just shows some of the data we gather in order to try and um, uh, make sense of, of the effects we're seeing. But you know, the, the key thing around the, the automotive work is you know, this reduction in glance time. Um, there's a whole study here that the um, University of Nottingham Human Factors Research Group did with, with haptic units and gesture tracking in a real car on, on a test track. And, with a, with, a num with a bunch of different people and, and measuring your know, eyes off the road time, user preference, and it was really strong effects in, in favor of you know, having that sense of touch in midair and therefore being able to keep your eyes on the road while, while uh, um, uh, implementing all the different controls. And then on, on the right here, under the marketing and advertising side, um, the, this is some, some data we got from a pilot down in Los Angeles last year at LA Live, it's one of the top 10 uh, uh, cinemas in the country in terms of traffic and we had a bunch of these interactive posters there when we ran a, quite a large marketing study there to, to gather data on uh, what difference is it making when you to take a, a you know a, compare a, a standard 2d poster on a screen with an interactive poster that has these 3d in, in immersive effects built into it and the, and the difference is, is, is huge uh, you, you, know, you can actually measure with with cameras on top of these screens how long people are looking at a screen you can track their eyes, you can even sort of track you know, what, what age and sex they are and, and what mood they're in, in indeed. Um, but they, but you know, we, we were trying to measure mainly dwell time and you can actually measure it, it on, the average is about a little less than two seconds typically for people as they walk past a digital poster. Uh, but if you make it interactive and people go up to it and experience it, of course, automatically that's going to be you know, massively larger. So you can get these you know, five, 10, even 30x increases in dwell time. Um, ad recall is another sort of metric about you know, how, how do people remember um, the poster and, and, then the, and what, what it is that's been advertised. So, so these, this, these sort of, um, this sort of data and these marketing metrics are really gold dust for some of the brands and studios that, that want you to actually uh, 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 see the posters, whether it's for retail or for, for movies, and then take action actually and go see the movie or purchase the product or whatever it is. 
So just in the, in the last uh, few minutes, I wanted to just touch on perhaps the most advanced work we've done in spatial computing and immersive design. Um, this, is, this was a, a project that we did with Dell. Uh, they essentially integrated four different technologies into an immersive design experience. So it, just off the screen at the bottom is, is a Dell Canvas tablet. That's used by you know, designers uh, to, to do detailed design work with a stylus. Um, and, and then typically they'll, they'll view the design uh, on, on 2D you know, standard monitors. But what we did here, or they did here differently, was um, uh, integrate it with an augmented reality headset from Meta. So as you, uh, you, know, do, you did the detailed design work, in this case uh, it's a Nike shoe, then you could pull it up into midair and you, uh, you could, in, in augmented reality, you could see uh, the, the 3D visualization of that shoe. In this case, you could move it around and, and interact with it and see immediately in, in 3D what you, what you had designed. The two other technologies they added, one was, was voice control to, to and add another way of uh, inputting and, and, and controlling what, what, they're, what they're doing. And then they added our technology, the, the haptics technology at the back here, that's these two arrays at the bottom that essentially fill the whole space above the, uh, above the, the, uh, the tablet with, with haptic effects. And so as you watch this video in, in a moment, it, it, is, it is a real video of, of a real demo. People always ask me at the end, is it, is it sort of uh, com computer graphics or computer fiction? Um, but it, no, it is real, and, and all the interactions that you see in midair with the shoe uh, can be felt as well. And this is where sort of the design work comes in, because you, you need to make these interactions natural and, and uh, intuitive. And so when it's, when it's, for example, grasping a menu button in midair, which you'll see, you know, that's a, that's a pop um, as you do that. It's a sort of a, it's a, it's a short haptic effect, as an example. Whereas when they're, uh, you know, say, rescaling the shoe or dragging a, uh, or even touching the surface of the shoe, then that's more of a continuous haptics. There's a, there's a huge amount of parameters to explore, and this is, it's a whole sort of fascinating area about you know, how, do you, how do you make these interactions the, the most intuitive and, and natural that they can be. I'll just play you this, uh, this video. It starts with a question. Load women size eight. Followed by an idea on how to make things simpler, better, or more beautiful. Approximate shape from sketches. But it's not just what it looks like. Load cross terrain sequence. It's how it works. Which means trying. And failing. And trying again. To be a designer means not being bound by the limits of your tools. But instead... Expand box. Being inspired by them. Show me the upper. so that you can focus on what only you can do. Being creative. Being curious. And being critical. Exploring the union between function and form until suddenly you know optimize cushion pattern for terrain that's it and when you're ready to share your work make sure everyone can see that the world is a little simpler better and more beautiful So that was that was the Dell project. I think it was it was a, a really really uh, well performed uh, sort of integration of all these different uh, effects, and it really uh, I think shows the, the 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 future really. And as these headsets become lighter weight and, and more prevalently used, I think this is the sort of application that's really going to lead the way. Um, I'll skip through a couple of things here because uh, I'm, I'm out of time. Just maybe just to whet your appetite here, there's, a, there's another hugely interesting area of work that we do around uh, emotions and, and uh, social 
uh, with haptics. You know. Can you imagine a future where you could sort of, if you're wearing an, an AR headset and you're seeing, uh, say, your um, a collaborator from work or your grandmother, um, you could, could you actually interact with uh, him or her, um, shake their hands or actually caress a, a family member over the network? Um, and it's really interesting, some of this work, because it, depending on where you um, intercept the hand, the type of effect you deliver on the hand, where it's located, can make a huge difference to, to, difference to the emotional response of, of the person that, that's, that's being, uh, having the haptics delivered to them. There's a lot of interesting work on this, which I, I won't go through. Um, but it, it, it just to sort of whet your appetite about what's possible. Um, you can, uh, different uh, levels of pleasure um, and arousal and, and scariness can all be communicated through these, these haptic effects. And, and, and they really can be strongly mapped to what's being, uh, um, the, the, the effect that's being created and received, in, even with sort of in, in blind testing. So a uh, really interesting area, I think, for the future. Um, but uh, I think I will leave it there. I hope this given you a little bit of uh, a taste for, for what we do and, and just some of the, the possibilities for, for designing in this, this whole new canvas, which is really wide open at this point. I mean, we're, we've done these, these experiences, there's some stuff out there, but you know, the, the, the parameters you can explore with some of the, the tools we, we have uh, are really, really wide open at this point. So it's, it's, a, it's a, hugely, a hugely interesting area, I think. So thank you very much. Thanks for your, thanks for your time.